Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. I'm so excited to hang out with you today and make this awesome table runner. Although I do have just a small confession that I need to make to you all, but that can wait to the end. Enough talking already, let's get busy making this adorable table runner. The first thing we wanna do is measure where this table runner is going to go. So I decided that it's going to go on my kitchen table. So I took my measuring tape out to my kitchen table and I just figured, you know, around about where I wanted it to end on the ends because my table's kind of rectangle and then where I wanted to end within the width of the table runner. <laughs> It's really not rocket science, but it's kind of tailored to fit your table or the table that you wanna fit this table runner on. So for my table runner, for my table in my kitchen, this is how I did it. I decided that I wanted to have it around 35, 36 inches in length, long wise of the rectangle part of the table. I just put a pin here on this end and then I popped a pin in over here. Now I did pop it at the lower number 35, but I know that I can go 36 and 37 would be pushing it. So I am going to be able to give myself just a little bit of room there if I wanna go longer. For the width of my table runner, I decided on 16 inches wide. Here's the thing with the width. People are going to be sitting at this table and eating, right? So you want there to be enough room on the other side of here and the other side of here to be able, you know, to put a plate of food, right? So you can eat. <laughs> you just need to be mindful of the width. Now I can go a tad more than 16, but I really don't want to because then it infringes on, you know, the plates. Now that we have the measurement that we want, we do have to decide on like design elements. I want mine to be scrappy and I want the blocks to be set on point, giving it that wonky look. I think that I want points on the ends. I'm not sure yet. I don't think I want a squared off table runner, but that's yet to be seen. So you can see here, these are three of the wonky blocks that are on one end. I'm gonna share with you how I made these right here. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate these three blocks and they will be over on this side. I'll give you all the measurements too. In my fabric stash, I keep low volume fabric just for projects like this. I love using low volume fabric because it just makes everything else pop so beautifully. And I love the scrappy look of all the highs and lows of the low, if that makes sense. This one right here happens to be some yardage and such. And usually, let's see if I can, if I can find one. Usually I do use low volume with color in it, but I decided against that on this particular project because I wanted that red, white, and blue to really pop out. So you can see here, I chose really muted low volumes. I didn't use any that had color. Gray was okay, you know, hints of gray, taupe and tan or, you know, creamy colored stuff. That was all fine too. So it just, Depends really like this. I would have totally used, you know, as a low volume in a different project, but not this one because we want that red, white, and blue to really shine. So I decided against anything with any real color in it. This one right here has a lot of the scraps in it. You know, it's just pieces of muted out colors. It's, you know, something that I've done for a long time, just keeping these low volumes around. So you're gonna need some low volume fabrics if you wanna make one like mine. And you also will need some red and blue prints within your fabric. For the bigger of the three stars, which is this one here on the end, for the center, you're going to need a three inch square. And you're also going to need three inch squares of all of the outer squares. You're going to need eight low volume squares at three inches. And then you're gonna have to pick through your stash and find a scrap that has, you know, red and blue in it. For the second size square, I used two and a half inch squares to make the wonky star. And you can see there in the center, I have some red lobsters with some blue stars and a dark blue background on it, super cute. 
all these around here are all low volume. Even this little guy right here, which I love my sheep fabric, these little tiny sheep, they're so cute. For this little block here, you're going to need two inch squares. And here I just happen to have a little patriotic, you know, scrap there. So that's two inches and then all the other squares are two inches. Next, you're going to need a bunch of red and blue scraps. I did press these out, but these are just whatevers that I had in my stash. So I found all of my scraps in my scrap wall of fame over there. <laughs> so I just picked out things that, you know, were red and they didn't have really too much any other color but the color in them. Like this blue right here does have little tiny dots of yellow in it, but I think it's going to be okay. And then here, these are just scraps that I have pressed out. Each star block that you make, you're going to need four blue scraps and four red scraps for the star points. I'm going to show you on film here how to make the two and a half inch little square star and you will apply this technique to the rest of the wonky squares or wonky stars. So we've already found the center which is the lobsters. Now I need to go ahead and find the star points. And since this is a darker blue, I think I'm just going to go with some lighter blues that I have here. So I picked out a red and a blue scrap. Now this scrap is a little big for this square, but it's okay. So if this is the bottom part, the part that will touch the lobster piece, right? We need to lay it this way along here so that when we fold it over, that will be one of our star points coming up and out. So what you want to watch out for is that you have enough scrap to cover this block as far as points goes. You don't want to go all the way up to the top at the angle because remember we're going to have a quarter inch in there. So I would just try to stay away from that. But you want it wonky so you can angle it anywhere here on the bottom. I could angle it this way and go like that or I could even come in and make it a skinny one. And then I fold it over to see if it fits and it totally does. So let me just show you what this looks like. So I'm just gonna kind of be conservative here. Lay it there and then I'm gonna come across here with, you know, a eighth to a quarter inch on these smaller blocks. You can go as small as an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you can see there hopefully. And when I turn that over and I finger press, I'm going to wait to trim it until after because I really want you to see real time what we're doing here. So that totally fits. So what I'm going to do is grab my scissors. I'm just going to trim this little piece off right there. So all I did was just trim that off, fold it back. Now I'm going to come over here and remember this is the bottom piece. Pretend like none of this is there. That's the bottom piece. The main thing is you got to make sure that you have a straight edge too that you're sewing on so that way you know you can get it on there straight. I'm just going to lay it on this corner and flip it back. It doesn't have to be the same amount of slant or the same amount away from the end as this one. That's what makes this so wonky is that it just, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. So I'm going to make it a little bit more angled and I'm going to come in giving it a shorter point. So it'll end up looking like that. So I'm just going to pop that back down. Move that out of the way. Do your quarter inch or an eighth. You know, you, if you need more fabric, if you got a tiny scrap, you can go an eighth. Just flop it over there just to make sure that, you know, it's doing what it's supposed to. And it is, so now I can trim off this little piece. I can go all the way down into here. And then you want to flip, flip the seam allowance where it makes sense. If it wants to go one way, push it one way. If it wants to go the other way, press it that way. It, so now when you get to this point right here, when you have both of that craziness going on there, right? You're going, and this is the top, these are gonna be the two points. And this is the bottom. 
just keep that in mind. I'll keep it there just so you can kind of see. When you go to square this up, you're going to square it up at the size that you started with. So if this was a two and a half inch square to start with, I'm going to cut it at two and a half inches square all the way around. I'm going to use this right here as my guide, the top of that low volume square that I started with. Now I just took it over to my pressing station and I pressed everything nice and flat. So then after you press it, make sure you press it because we want a nice clean block. We don't want anything that's crazy. So now I'm going to line it up with two and a half inches along that low volume edge. And once you have it, then you're gonna slice. And here you can see these two cute points. And they're wonky, they're not the same, you know, they're different angled and they're different, you know, away from the top there. And so that is what you're looking for in your points. And then I'm gonna add this one off to that side. Now these four blocks on the corners, we're not gonna do anything with those except sew it all together when we're done. So we're just concentrating on these four blocks here, getting those points on. So the other thing you wanna make sure of is if you start with a blue one here and then a red one, make sure that you put your next point here, blue, red, blue, red, and so on. That'll just make sure that you know all the colors are evenly spread out. And let's grab a blue piece because that's the one that's next. We want, just so orientation is correct, so we want the blue star coming out this way for the point. So I'm gonna lay it here anywhere. I can go wide if I want and big. And there looks good. Anything goes. And if this bothers you, you know, if it's in your way, just go ahead and slice it off now if you want. And leave that like that and then let's go for a red. Now we're going to come over here and add a red in. I think I want this one a little bit skinnier and smaller like so. I'm gonna run over here and press it and cut it. Okay, so you can see here, let's bring this back up. So that is the star point there for that one. Now we're gonna add that one on. You can see here, this one is really wonky. I love that. Another thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you don't have a lot of white or low volume in your particular point because then it will just blend into the background. Okay, here's our last star point for this particular block. And the next thing you're going to do is then just sew those three rows, those three rows, and those three rows. So that is what that cute little block looks like. So this is the two and a half inch tiny squares, you know, in this nine patch. You're going to trim this one down about six and a half inches. That's the size of this ruler. Just line up best you can with the lines on the ruler that are on this square center here and then go ahead and trim. So here is our six and a half inch wonky star. Cute. Now I know this looks kind of crazy, right? But it's okay, trust me. <laughs> I'm gonna pop a picture here. This is a picture of all of the wonky star squares that you need for this particular table runner project. You can see here that I've just duplicated these three stars over here. And this star right here though is this star, and this star is this star. So I've just swapped them, you know, to give it a little bit more dynamic. <laughs> and then I've left these ones on the side. Now as far as the center one goes, there is the size there. Now that size, it looks a little wonky, right? That's because it is. In order for us to set this on point, 
and to set it in rows so that we don't have any Y seams and such, I had to make it that size. So I guess the tip here is to make sure that these points don't go all the way down here into the edge because you are gonna have to cut this one way longer than the other way. Now I didn't give you this measurement just yet, but I'm gonna give it to you now. This is a five inch square in here and I just did it scrappy all together and then added, you know, the points around. So this is five inch in here trimmed. This is five, 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 five. And then you trim it to that wonky measurement that I shared with you a second ago. It's really not that hard. I hope you guys understand that explanation because that's the only way to work it out so that we are, you know, assembling it in some organized way. <laughs> this next picture that I'm gonna pop in here, it shows in green all of the spots that need to be filled in with a scrappy low volume. Now I know this is oversized right here. In the end, I'm going to be trimming it into a rectangle size. I mean, you just set up there on your design wall pretty much a little bit oversized of what you need before you attach it. And then we're going to attach all these pieces in one row, so to speak. And then we're going to attach these pieces in one row. And then this last piece right here and then connect them all together. So let me get those on there and we'll see what it looks like. I've attached all of the extra pieces. In this area right here, I did have to add a couple of small low volumes in to make the whole piece. I'm going to add those three together and I'll be right back. So this is what this looks like when you have all of those extra pieces on there. So ultimately though, let me fold this back so you can get an idea of what this is really gonna look like. So you can see here, these ends are, you know, they have that point or that handkerchief, I think it's called, look to it on the end. So I don't know if, I think I might have to add another piece right in here and here, only because I wanna make sure that I get all the free motion quilting on there and then cut it all down. But I will cut off some of this right here, right now, so that way it's done and I don't have to worry about it. Here is the backing for this table topper and it's so cute, right? Just a, you know, red stripe. I've opted for wool batting and to double it only because I have some scraps left from other quilts. You can see here, this one has a cut into it. I mean, you know, it's just me trying to use up what I have, you know? So here I'm just going to spray baste with 505 right there. And I'm not getting any on my table, no worries. I'm gonna lay that first bat down and spread it out. You're probably wondering why I am double batting this. Well, I don't know, really. I just want to try it and see how it looks for a table runner to see if it really makes a huge difference in you know, the way the quilting looks on it. And honestly, I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to look really good, double batted, but we'll see. So I can already see yeah, the, these stars are a little offset, but that was because, you know, the way they're smaller and whatnot. So if I stay true to this, the point is probably going to end up somewhere in here. I don't know. We'll see. Next, I'm going to get set up for free motion quilting and we'll see what we can do on this. I've decided to outline the stars twice and then go ahead and put some meander in there, you know, everywhere else. What I'm trying to do is make these stars pop, and I think it's working. What do you think? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. I need to get over in this spot right here because I left a lot out there, or a chunk anyways.
Sorry about that sunshine, friends, but I'm letting it come in. <laughs> so I've trimmed the sides all up, and now to do this area right here, I'm going to take my big square ruler and line it up. And get that, you know, as square as I possibly can. Well, I'm thinking if I have the same amount on each side here, that's going to give that a nice point, I'm hoping. So let's pray and we'll go ahead and cut. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh my goodness, I love it when a plan works out. So you can see here that is wonky off to the side, but that's perfectly okay because it's even here. And there's nothing I can do about that. Because it is what it is, right? So let me put this together, make sure that these add up. And they do. This right here, I did not purchase myself. It was part of my mom's stash that she has given me in the past. <laughs> I just grabbed it from one of her bins because I thought, oh, you know what? This would look good on something red, white, and blue or 4th of July-ish, right? You can see here the print, the striping is already on the bias. So they've taken into account that this is going to work perfectly as a binding. <laughs> This fabric right here, uh, it probably is not in print anymore, but it's Susie Altman for Robert Kaufman. Whenever I come across one of these pieces in my stash, I always know that it's from my mom because of this right here. For whatever reason, she surged all of her fabric like and washed it and all that. So that was kind of her thing and what she did. So I'm just going to fold this up once and then twice. So I'm going to cut this across grain. Usually we cut, you know, on the bias and whatnot sometimes. I mean, I typically don't, but I know a lot of people do. So I have this all layered up. You always want to put the fold towards you whenever you cut in layers like this when it's folded. I'm going to line the fold up on my cutting mat. And then I'm going to take my ruler and with the line on my cutting mat and also following the fold because we don't want a bow in our binding. Nope, we sure don't. <laughs> I'm going to leave this ruler here and I'm going to come in with this ruler at one and three quarter inches. Once you have the one and three quarter, then go ahead and slice. So now we're just going to pin these right here at the cutting mat. When making continuous binding, you always want to remember when you go to connect them, if you're doing it at an angle anyways, right sides together, always. And you're going to just line them up. Now to you, that look, probably looks like an L shape. Down and like that. So this one's right side up and this one's right side down, right sides together. I have a bit peeking out here and I have a bit peeking out there. Take my little ruler and I'm going to mark right where those corners meet up here and right where that corner meets there, right inside that intersection. And I'm going to draw a line. That is where I'm going to sew. A pin here and a pin here. So now I'm just going to slide this one this way and you can see here that is going to match up without that pin there, you know, it'll just match right up. These stripes will all be going in the same direction. But now you have that, you're going to slide that here. Now you have this is still wrong side up, right? So what you're going to do is now take this 
and make sure it's not twisted because I've done that before. <laughs> now you're just going to flip this again, grab another piece and right sides together again with some peeking out here and some peeking out on the other side, like an L shape. Put your ruler right in the crux, I guess that's called right here. I don't, I, what comes to mind, but I don't know. Is that called a crux? I don't know, is that new lingo? <laughs> oh my word. I don't know, things come to mind when I try to explain things and I never know if that's like dialect, like region specific or, or what. <laughs> but you tell me, is that the crux? I'll be looking that up later. Again, make sure you're not twisted. And then flip right side up, grab another piece. So now all you're going to do is take and drop your needle right at the end there in that crux. <laughs> and you're going to sew straight on that line. And when you do that, you can see there you have your binding. Now, if I was real fussy, I would match those up really good, which I am kind of fussy. So yeah, I might have to go back in and fix that. Oi, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't like that. Oh boy, okay. Let's just cut this whole thing off. The whole corner, sorry. Okay, so if you didn't have like fabric that needed to be matched up, you could do it the way I just showed you. But if you do have fabric that needs to be matched up, so you see here that that goes like that, and that's that upside down L. So what you're gonna do with this is just lift this up with some leeway here on the end. Kind of finger crease that. Now you're going to Lift this over here. Now keep going until you have both the top edge, which is this edge right here, and this edge meeting up, which we still don't. So let me back it up. So what I'm looking for with that folded, like so at that angle, I'm looking that these all match up, but I'm also looking right here, is this top edge here level along that edge, which it is, and it is right there too. So that tells me that, yep, I have a match. <laughs> so I'm just gonna flip this back, and then I'm gonna pin, and you can see where I've finger creased it, there's actually a line there, and you can do that as well, you know, finger crease, instead of actually drawing the line, that works too. And now, let's see, I'm gonna come over here and then just sew on that crease mark. All right, let's see what we got. Much better. Oh yes, okay. I'm happy with that. <laughs> you're gonna trim the excess off here and you're gonna leave about a quarter inch or so. And then you're going to press open when we take this whole thing over to the sewing machine to pre-crease the fold over, we're going to press those open just like that. Beautiful. Okay, that's gonna be so cute. This binding right here is one and three quarter inches and then it is folded half an inch right there on one side. So I just have to figure out if I want it to wrap around to the front or the back. It's gonna be cute, right? So I'm attaching this binding to the back first, but I wanted to show you that these angles right here are the same as if we were to miter it on a regular corner. So let's go ahead and do that. You're gonna stop a quarter inch before you get to that point. break thread. I'm going to take this binding right here and flip it back just like that so that it is now straight with this right here. So this is all nice and straight. 
Put your finger right here and pinch. Lift this binding back over onto itself and pinch that like so. And then straighten these edges right here with the binding. And this is still crisscross like that. Hold that or clip it, pin it, however you like. And then put it back underneath the sewing machine starting along the edge, at the edge point a quarter inch, you know, in as your seam allowance. Did you figure out what my confession was? I think maybe some of you have. Some of my ride or die sewing channel viewers, I just know that you figured it out. <laughs> okay, confession time, friends. This was my very first table runner that I've ever made, ever. I know, it really is though. <laughs> you know, I've probably made a hundred quilts or more, but I've never made a table runner, so. Here it is in all of its glory, debut, the table runner. <laughs> Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.